start with the basics, you know, is, is my point. And the basics, as far as I'm concerned, is anatomy. And it's so important, I can't stress this enough. If you're going to do a mask, um, pull out tons of anatomy reference. I've had these books, and this is just like, I brought three books, which I usually, to this day, still pull out these books. I've had these books since the 80s, you know. And I still look at this stuff because um, I have a lot of the anatomy in my head, but I still like to reference this stuff um, because it's, it's a completely essential. And I brought along a skull, too. So I always try to keep a skull near me when I'm, when I'm sculpting as well because this tells you a lot of information that you need to know of the structure of a face. You see the cheekbones. You see the way the teeth is. You see how the jaw dives in here and how this, the, the jaw goes up underneath the, um, uh, your cheekbone uh, bones. And then the sockets of the eyes, the ridges, all this kind of stuff. Um, when I see a lot of people's early work, I can kind of tell whether they've studied anatomy or not, you know. And, and um, I think it's so important to, to look at this kind of stuff. Buy a cheap skull. I mean, this thing, I think, this is one of those little medical skulls you can get for like 60 bucks, you know. Um, you can get a, um, Lindbergh is like a plastic model kit that you can get for like probably 20 bucks. You can order it online, you know. Um, keep a skull around because it's going to be really important. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're sculpting a werewolf or, or a, you know, an outlandish monster of some sort. You still want it to be tied into something that's living. You still want to have the anatomy there, you know. Um, that's so key. So, uh, um, so skulls, anatomy books. This is a, a book I got probably sometime in the early 80s. Um, again, there's lots of pictures of skulls. Now, Nowadays, you have the internet, so you can get any of the stuff, information on this kind of stuff on the web. Everybody knows that. You can get uh, muscle reference and so on and so forth, arm reference. I still, to this day, look at this stuff. As you can see, it's got clay gunk all over the place because I still look at this stuff. You, you want to refresh your memory, you, you know, you want to know what you're doing and ears are really important a lot of times people skip through ears so on and so forth body stuff um, so that's your basic anatomy books if you don't have a book find it online save a morgue a file you know uh, to your la to your desktop so you can refer to anatomy when you're sculpting a face or something like that and a lot of people are like I have people tell me like, well, I'm sculpting a werewolf. I can't find anatomy for a werewolf because werewolves don't exist. Well, you can still tie it into a, a dog or a Doberman or a, a pit bull or uh, any other thing. You know, like you're, there's, even though you're doing a fantasy creature, base it on, on, on reality and, and you'll ultimately be a, have a very, very much better uh, looking thing, a much better looking creature, you know. So um, then, so this, I rather like this artist a lot. His name is Bern Hogarth. He does dynamic anatomy, right? And he was a comic book artist who drew Tarzan back in the 50s and 40s and stuff. Uh, Bern Hogarth is one of my favorites. And he does, he takes anatomy and then he kind of uh, makes it really angular, almost like if it's like machined. So it's a great way to understand the way a, a head shape is, you know? Um, because he'll break it down to really, really broad. Like, as you can see, that's the beginnings of a head. You can see the top of the head, and this is the jaw, like you're looking up at it. You can see, um, Burns great. He'll do dynamic, you know, fingernails, you know? <laughs> I mean, the guy's crazy. Look at all the angles he puts in, into his nose and stuff like that. I mean, this is beautiful, you know? And it's very angular and very exaggerated, but this is really, really important to look at how these planes work off of each other. You know, um, I, I look at this stuff a lot, too. I mean, you can see it's this beautiful stuff. It's almost like the way a monument is sculpted, you know. But uh, I'm, I love this guy's work. It's really cool. It's, it's, it's very stylized, of course. I mean, look at the crazy. He puts muscles in, you know, practically in, in, the, in the knuckles and stuff. But, and again, it's, it's a little exaggerated, but you, you get the sense of, like, the really broad, large shapes on stuff, you know. Look at, I mean, this, the, the feet, look at the, how beautiful that leg is. And it's very chiseled and it's very, like, um, sculptural, like a, like a statue, like a, like a Greek monument or something like that, but, but, uh, um, or a Roman monument or something. But you can see where these planes are. It helps you understand the shapes better. I mean, look at that foot. It's crazy. So 
This is very cool. Burn Hogarth. I'm sure you can order these books uh, wherever you order books. Just find it online. And then here, great an animal anatomy book. Same thing. I always look at this kind of stuff too. To, you, know, you can combine human and animal anatomy, um, which I think is the best. You know? Also too, when you're creating monsters. You know? You're doing a werewolf. Well, you know, look, at, look, at the, look at the bones of a dog. You know? Look at the way that his cheekbones are. Look at the way his forehead is. Look at how his nose, uh, um, the opening of the nose of the skull and how it relates to the outside. All this stuff is really, really key when you're doing a monster. You know, don't think you could just pluck it out of your head. Look at the, like something that's living and real and I think you'll do a better creature in the end. Yeah. I do have one question about anatomy. Okay. And then we're gonna go into tools. This is from Paul Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, when studying reference and anatomy, I struggle. The struggle is making my female characters powerful without making them masculine. Are there any pointers or studies that could help me with that? Um, that's actually a really good question. Um, uh, fe the female form um, is really, really difficult to sculpt and paint because the, f the femininity of it, um, uh, for some reason, it's, hard, it's harder for an artist to capture that softness or the, the streamlined nature of a woman's body is, is kind of harder to do than, than a masculine. So that is difficult. And, and, and um, uh, the, what I, what, again, what I could suggest to you is um, in some of these anatomy books, um, they do have a, a female musculature, and, and, and now a lot of times there's, there's people that are even selling these really, really great little plastic urethane models of the male form and the female form. And um, uh, basically you have to study it and, and try to get that, the more streamlined nature of, of a female face and, and, the, and the, the female body. It's, it's softer, but if, if, if you think about it, all the bones and all the skull and, and, and muscles on a woman is the same as a man. It's just shaped differently. So you just have to wrap your head around the way the, the streamlined nature and the softness of, of that is. You know? So um, uh, again, look, look at anatomy. Look, try to find uh, um, some reference for, uh, um, uh, for the, the anatomy, particularly of uh, the bones of, of a woman's face and the muscles of a woman's face, and that's stuff you can find online. Um, and it's just have to copy it. You look at it, you study it, and you, you try to copy it, you know?